Outlet Profile. You're listening to Premier Christian Radio. You are listening to The Profile on Premier Christian Radio. This programme is brought to you by Premier Christianity and you can get yourself a free copy of the magazine by heading to premierchristianity.com slash free copy. I'm Ruth Jackson and at the end of last year I caught up with multi-award winning singer and musical theatre star Rachel Ann Go. She has created seven albums. Well, she thinks it's seven. She's made so many she can't even remember. Many of them have gone gold or platinum and she has starred in so many musical theatre shows in both the West End and on Broadway. Some of those include Les Miserables, Miss Saigon, The Little Mermaid, Hamilton. And if, if that wasn't enough, she has also featured in the music video for A Dream Is A Wish Your Heart Makes, which was for the 2015 Disney blockbuster film of Cinderella. Well, it's such a pleasure to have you here today. Hi! We've had a tiny little snippet of all the incredible things that you've got up to. But if it's okay with you, I'd love to go right back to the beginning. What was life like for Rochelle and Go growing up in the Philippines? Well, um, yeah, I grew up in a, in a Catholic family. We weren't, we weren't really religious. Like, we don't really go to church as much. But, like, growing up, I... I I know of Jesus, you know, like I, I pray a lot when I was a kid and um, my family's musically inclined, um, especially my dad. He was actually the one who taught me how to sing and play musical instruments. My mom used to be a singer before in a band. So like, you know, I grew up in that kind of household. So it was it every day was really loud at home like both me and my my brother before we were just like singing and dancing and play you know we were just playing musical instruments all day long but um yeah I didn't really have a I think I kind of had a tough time um growing up I was bullied a lot like there were it wasn't like a, a, a um what how would you say it? like a smooth fun youth journey for me um but I think it really you know those moments really molded me molded who I am today which I'm grateful of but um yeah it wasn't really it wasn't a fun start for me yeah well thank you for sharing so honestly but (laughs) how how did you first encounter God in the kind of real way that you talk about him now what was your first encounter with God as a child um, well, you know, because everyone in the Philippines, everyone, they, they, they know of Jesus and they know, you know, the whole story, we read the Bible. Um, I didn't really have a relationship. I just know of him. And, um, I just remember every single night I would pray and just say good, good night to like, good night, Papa Jesus. And, um, I think that that's my memory, like growing up. But then back in 2005, someone invited me to go to church. Um, and yeah, it, it, uh, someone invited me to a Christian church. And I was like, well, I have my, my own church. I was talking about the Catholic church at that time. And I said, why do I have to go to your church? You know, like I have all these questions in my head. And then... My, this person was like, well, just, just try it out. You know, there's a band, you know, we play worship music. And at that point I didn't really, I couldn't understand why do you have a band? Why is there, you know, why is it like a concert anyway? So <laughs> this person kept asking me over and over. Um, and then one day I was like, sure, fine. Cause this person was so consistent and just for you to stop, I'll go. <laughs> so I went And I will not forget that moment. I was just crying. You know, the typical Christian story. I just sobbed the whole time. Um, I think that the message was, the message really hit me at that time. And I said, whoa, like, I just felt peace and at home. And and I think after I left that Sunday, I was like, I want to go back. You know, like, I feel like my spirit was so filled with something that I couldn't understand what it was at that time. Um, 
and so yeah that was that was the start and this person they invited me to like a bible study it wasn't a smooth journey of course but it took me a long time <laughs> um to to really go deeper um but yeah that's how it started and let's go back to the beginning in terms of where the singing came from you said that your dad was really musical did you always sing was that something that you always did in your house you know my parents would always say um when I was eight months old, this is wow. really like a baby. <laughs> when I was eight months old, there was a music playing um, on the radio. It's called um, Somewhere Out There. Um, and then I just started humming to the tune of that song. Like they were like, this baby will grow up as a singer. Like they just knew it at that time. Mm-hmm. And then, um, yeah, since then, like three years old, my dad would always say, that he would put me on top of the table and, you know, he would ask me to sing in front of the family, in front of all the relatives <laughs> during the, the holiday season. Um, so I think that was the start. And then I joined singing competition when I was, the first competition I joined in was, uh, I was nine years old, I think. Um, so that was the start of the journey. Just, you know, I was, I was so shy growing up. So that was, my training how to overcome my my fear yes in front of people (laughs) and you overcame that fear in quite a remarkable way like you said (laughs) you you performed in your first show at nine you then went on a television program at 11 years old that then that then led to you becoming the grand champion of a, of a talent show called Search for a Star. Yeah. Could you say just a little bit about that happen, how that happened? Because that's quite a remarkable thing, isn't it? To go from singing on your kitchen table yeah. to being the star of a Filipino television show. Yeah. I think I, I knew what I wanted when I was a kid. Um, and I used to have these dreams, like up to now, you know, I'm such a dreamer. And I used to have this dream that I will, like, I always perform in front of like thousands of people and in like in an arena so like growing up I knew I was going to be a singer and that's like in my heart that's what I wanted to be um and so every time I see you know watch television and I see singers like I I always say like I want to I want to be um out there singing for people and just sharing what I what I have um and so I think that was the start, you know, like joining like different competitions in the in the Philippines. We call it like amateur competitions in different towns. And then, um, yeah, when I was 11, I joined this competition in TV. But then again, every time I join, there's that, I'm always nervous. There's always that fear. I'm always like, like the youngest among all the, <laughs> you know, the singers out there. And I think the, the, the most memorable one was the first one when I was nine years old. Um, it's bizarre because I was nine and I can still remember everything, like what I was wearing, what I was, you know, feeling. And before they announced the winner, um, I just heard people say, oh, she will never win. You know, she's not that good. Like they were saying like all, the, all you know, like the bad stuff. And I was like, I was really hurt as a young kid. Um, and then when they announced the winner, and the winner is Rachel Ann Go. And I was just like, really? Like, <laughs> like <laughs> so I think that really encouraged me, like knowing that whatever you know I hear, whatever people will say, I can still make it. Like mm-hmm. I can still win. So I think that really pushed me. And I'm like, you know, whatever happens, even if I fail, you know. I will still keep going because I want, this is my dream. And so I guess even if it's really tough to join competitions on TV, it's really nerve wracking. <laughs> um, I just, I just have to do it. I did it. And with, you know, with the help and support of my family as well, um, especially my parents. Um, and so, yeah, the last competition was the search for a star in, in 2004, which was the start of it all. Yeah. And I mean, that's a lot to deal with when you're young, isn't it? Becoming the grand champion of a huge TV show. How did you manage to stay grounded in all of that? I assume your parents had a huge amount to do with that. Oh, definitely. But um, 
you know, there was a season in my life where I'm like kind of lost. <laughs> it wasn't like an easy thing for me. I didn't know how to handle the showbiz world, I must say. Um, I was at uh, university at that time and I'm like, I don't know what to do. I was, you know, I was a student and all of a sudden I'm, I have this contract, I have this management, I have a recording label and I didn't know like all of a sudden, like it was like an overnight thing. I didn't know where to start, how to handle, um, how to act in front of like thousands of people on TV. So it was just a lot to take in. I was probably 17 at that time. So it was a lot. And um, yeah, it, it was tough like going in that kind of industry. Were you in the Philippines at all of that time or did that involve quite a lot of traveling around as well? Yes, we did travel a lot. Um, I believe we started traveling in 2006. We did like US tour. We went to Canada, we went to Middle East. It was just like concert tour everywhere. Um, I think the longest was probably a month and a half. Um, oh. We weren't like sleeping. Like I couldn't do that now. <laughs> <laughs> the joys of youth we didn't really feel tired at that point but um yeah it was just like show after show after show um it was a lot it was fun it was so memorable you know we met a lot of people good people um but yeah a lot of traveling and then you eventually moved from the Philippines what was that like that must have been quite a culture shock was it or or were you used to it because of all the people you'd met on the road no, it's different because like moving to a different country, you mean moving to London, mm -hmm. it was totally different. Um, I was so scared to move here by myself because every time I travel before, my mom would always go with me, mm. you know, someone would always go with me. So it's, it's, it's such a comfort thing knowing that, oh, my mom is here. It's fine. Wherever I go, she can take care of me. <laughs> um, so when I moved here, I was 27. That was um, in 2014. So yeah, I, at that point, I, I wasn't really sure if I should do it. I was so scared. Um, you know, I kept asking people um, for their advice. Like, should I, should I move by myself? Like, my parents are so supportive. They were like, if you think this is for you, then go ahead, you know, do it. Um, although, yeah, it, it took me a while to really say, I should go and then I just started praying and I was like just Lord like reveal to me what do you want me to, to do where do you want me to go and I remember I was reading the Bible it says and Joshua it says do not be discouraged like everywhere you go I will be with you and I was like that's true like I shouldn't be scared like I know Philippines will be my is my home like everywhere I go if I have Jesus with me it's going to be my home anyway so it doesn't matter where I am so I, I think I woke up that morning when I read that verse I said this is my answer I'm gonna say yes to to the offer um to do the show in London so I did so that was in 2014 so I, I moved here by myself <laughs> <laughs> and I guess that's quite a change isn't it you went from being this kind of international singing superstar to then going into musical theater how <laughs> how did that happen I mean people do do it but it's not the normal route into musical theater really is it how did that come about no um you know it's funny growing up I had no idea what theater is about like it was in the Philippines there the the crowd of um, musical theater and the crowd of you know like concert goers are totally different um and so it I, yeah I just didn't have that background I didn't have any training um and what's amazing was that in I think in 2009 and 2010 I had um someone um offered me to do a show called uh, The Little Mermaid they asked me to do to play the role of Ariel and then in 2012 or 2012 I think um, they asked me to play the role of Jane Porter in Tarzan so I have you know I have those two um, experience like I that theater experience um, in the Philippines before I head here so in a way I kind of have that you know that the, the feeling of being on stage and acting as well um, and 
up to now, I'm so grateful for, you know, the people who really helped me a lot because at that time, I'm like, I can't do this. Like, I can't <laughs> act on stage. I can't say a line. You know, I'm just, I'm, I was just like, I, I don't know what I'm doing. But they were just so supportive and they really believed in what I can do. And, it, and you know, in a way, I was like, if you believe in me, then maybe I can do this. And so I fell in love with it when I did The Little Mermaid. I was like, this is actually fun. I thought, <laughs> it's, you know, I just, I had such an amazing time that I fell in love with it. And then I did um, Tarzan as well. And so when I heard that there was an audition for the show um, in London, I was like, this is such an opportunity. Like I've been praying for something challenging. And that was really challenging for me. <laughs> that really challenged me a lot. And yeah, that was the start. Yeah. And uh, I mean, you have done so many things. You've made perhaps seven albums. Like like we said before, you can't even remember how many albums it is because you've made so many. You've been um, Eliza Hamilton in Hamilton, who's married to the star of the show. You know, you've done so many incredible things. If you had to whittle it down to one career highlight, is there something where you think, yeah, that's that's been the absolute highlight of my career so far? You know, I, I always share this with people. When I finished Hamilton... Hamilton was so, it was so good, but it was so tough. But I think um, besides the show itself, the highlight was just bringing Jesus in the show. We have this, we call it um, circle of love, um, but it's actually a prayer circle um, that we've started uh, when we opened the show. So and then when I left the show, they were still doing it. So I was like, thank you, Lord, that they're continuing, you know, to do it, to pray together. And it really makes, you know, it makes such a difference um, to unite everyone. It just felt like a family. And for me, that's the highlight, just sharing the gospel, sharing the truth. And yeah, it's really, yeah. Wow. So, so were there quite a lot of other Christians then in Hamilton? um there were a few when it, yeah when when we opened I knew like a few like two or three people and then we planned this circle of love <laughs> kind of <laughs> for it open. and I was like shall we you know shall we invite everyone so we did I was like who wants to join the circle of love and so everyone of course everyone joined everyone is open which is amazing um and then it was, I, I was surprised because some people, like, they acknowledge when they pray, they say, like, in Jesus' name. And I was like, oh, people, because it's all from different countries, from different cultures. Like, you, people believe, you know, um, and some, you know, some people don't believe. But after a few months, it was what surprised surprised me was one of the guys um we always ask him to say whatever he wants to say like you know we don't want to we want to respect as well what their beliefs are um they can say whatever they want like you know just say thank you or whatever they're grateful for and then one time this guy was beside me he would always say no like he doesn't want to say anything um and that night for some reason he was like okay, like, I don't do this, but tonight I will. And then he started praying in Jesus' name. And I was like, oh, I was like, God is really moving. So that really made my heart jump. Um, so yeah, it's amazing. Wow. I suppose it's one thing being on the West End when you can be regularly going to your church and being part of a Christian community. But if you're on tour and I know you've done some international tours, you're sort of, you know, in different places all over the, all over the world and, and probably not able to go to church because either that's your traveling day or you're working on a Sunday. How do you keep your faith strong in those situations when you're on tour? Well, when I was on tour, I believe I wasn't really, I wasn't saved yet at that time, okay. but you know, when I moved here, because I, I, I know God already. I was so excited to move here because I was like, oh, there'll be no distraction. It's just going to be <laughs> me and God. And what's going to be, it's going to be amazing. But no, <laughs> <laughs> it was so hard. I think I isolated myself uh, when I moved here because it, it was, you know, I, I was by myself. I was getting 
ill. We were, when I moved here, it was, my body was just adjusting. It was so cold. And I started rehearsing, rehearsals already. So I was like, this is just too much. And I was just so busy that I forgot, you know, like, I feel like I kind of pushed away God for, for a second. And then I realized, oh, I can't, I need my, I need community. You know, like I, I went, I started going to church, but you know, when you go to church, but you just go and go out and don't really plug in. So that's what happened to me probably for a year. I was, you know, I, I went through depression, which I didn't realize just, I realized it after it was like my first year in London, first a year and a half or two was really, really tough. And I, you know, God didn't leave me. He was just like there waiting for me. He kept pursuing me while I'm like, I'm so busy. I'm always tired. Yeah, that was my first two years here in London. And then when I went to New York, that's where I, uh, I met people from church like a re- it, who really helped me grow spiritually. I was only there for seven months or eight months. I was doing a show um, called Miss Saigon on Broadway. Um And I didn't realize that that is actually the time that I will really, really grow. Um, And that's where I met my husband as well. So everything just fell into place. And um, yeah, going back to your question, like it's really not easy to be away and be by yourself and really isolate yourself. I think it's so important to plug yourself and find people who will surround you. Um, who would you know who will help you grow um we'll come back to your husband in a minute because I'd love to hear a bit more about how you met and how that all developed because I know you've got a lovely story um but what is it like being a Christian in musical theatre because I suppose for, for some people it feels quite at odds doesn't it but what's what's been your experience as a believer working in musical theatre like towards for the first two years it was tough because as I've told you, I was like in a dark place at that time. I wasn't really sharing too much. Um, if I pray, I'm praying by myself. <laughs> you know, I wouldn't include people. Um, but then towards the end, I was like, I was so, there's that boldness. There's that um, urgency for me to share something because I've experienced not sharing anything with people. Then I was like, I just wasted that time. Like I waste, I felt like I wasted my purpose in that scene, in that theater. I didn't do anything. Like I should do something for the next, you know, next show. So I always believe that God will always give us an opportunity. He will always open doors for us to, you know, share something. And, and now I always tell this to my friends and even to my husband that, every time there's something there's that opportunity grab it because you know these people that I I meet or I encounter like you never know when you're going to work with them again you never know we're going to see them so just take that build that relationship I love building relationships with people and that's what's amazing in, in the theater world everyone's just open and you're you're basically you become a family because you're there during rehearsals, you're very vulnerable when you you act together, you know. Um, so I think everyone is just so open and that's really an advantage for me to, to speak the truth with them. Yeah. And are there any roles that you would maybe not take because of your Christian faith or, or any shows that you would maybe think twice about being <laughs> in? Well, well, actually, the first show that I did, I was so, I wasn't sure if I should do that. Um, I kept asking people, I was like, this is such a, you know, it was, it's kind of dark. And my role at that time, it's very, um, it's, it's not, it's not holy (laughs) at that time. So I kept asking people, even ask our pastor in the Philippines. And I remembered what they said to me, he said, um, you know, sometimes God will put you in dark places for you to shine, for you, for his, his light to shine through you. And I will never forget that. And I was like, it doesn't really matter what show I, I will do because, 
you know, it, it has a purpose. Like God will really put us somewhere, even in the darkest place. That's actually the best place to go to for you to, to share him. So I think, yeah, I think I, I don't know much shows, but, <laughs> but um, I think if you pray about it, feel like God is giving that um, to you, then go for it. You are listening to The Profile on Premier Christian Radio. I'm Ruth Jackson and I've been speaking to multi-award winning singer and musical theatre star Rachel Ann Go. Stay tuned for part two of our conversation. The Profile. You're listening to Premier Christian Radio. We mentioned earlier that you were in the music video of the Cinderella show, the the Disney blockbuster in 2015. And there's a brilliant quote here from Amit Malhotra, who's the general manager of Walt Disney Studios in Southeast Asia. And um, they say this, we were looking for someone special, not just to sing the song beautifully, but to also deliver the message reliably and inspire audience. We chose Rochelle Ango as she embodies the positivity and inspirations of Cinderella. She is a living idol for young Filipinos everywhere who never stopped following her dreams. I just heard this for the first time. (laughs) It's beautiful, isn't it? I just love that thing about where she says, an idol for young Filipinos everywhere who never stopped following her dreams. So I suppose, what would you say to young people who have got really disappointed um, by, by their dreams being broken or by people squashing their dreams? Is there any advice that you would give those young Filipinos who, like you, have got these big dreams and aspirations what what advice would you give them you just really you know don't listen to like negativity like growing up there were loads of bullies in my life a lot and that really it helped me like use those words to really help you grow um and I always look at the brighter side like I've, I've got reject rejected a lot of times like during auditions you know I lost so many amateur competitions but because I knew I wanted this so bad. I just want to be a singer. I just want to, you know, share. I kept going and going, even if I'm failing and I'm using that experience to really grow and hone my, my gift even more. Again, do not give up. That's, that's the line, right? That that's the line that we always use, but really don't ever give up because you're the perfect um, time will come. Like it took me a while to, to reach this point um and you know I still have so many dreams but I will I don't regret any of my decisions you very kindly shared some of the disappointments that you've been through and your sort of struggle with depression how has that affected your relationship with God do you feel like it's taken you closer to him or do you feel like actually it's it's caused you to question his existence question whether he's even there you know I never questioned his existence which is good but with the weakness during those dark moments, I just felt his presence even more because you felt, I felt so weak. I was like, there's no, like, I can't hold on to, you know, to people, to relationships, no one. I can't hold on to anyone but God. So I, during those moments, I really um, rejoice in that weakness because I felt his presence even more. It was so tangible, you know, um, and I remembered one time I was in my flat and I opened my Bible. I, I think I didn't open my Bible for a long time. <laughs> and then when I opened it for the first time again, I just started crying. I was like, I felt so bad. I was like, sorry, Lord, for I felt like I was pushing him and I was just running so far away from him. And I was just sobbing because he was just saying like, all this time I'm just here, you know, <laughs> just getting emotional. But it was such a beautiful moment that whatever we do, whatever we feel, even if we're pushing him away, he will not go anywhere. And that's what I realized. And um, so, yeah, from that point, I was just like, I just want to get to know him more and more. Um, and then God started to bless me with people who will help me grow. Um, And I'm so grateful for that. So how would you encourage someone who maybe is in a similar situation to where you were, who might just be really struggling with their faith? Is there any advice that you would give them? 
Yeah, oh, especially this season, you know, um, has been so tough for a lot of people. You know, I, I know loads of friends who they live alone, who are really isolated. And I just want to encourage you guys to just press on and just keep believing that this season, it, I know it's tough, but this has a purpose. And I really use this time to, to reconnect with my faith, my, my family, you know, everyone around me. I felt like I've been so busy all these years, <laughs> focusing, you know, in my life and my career. But really, this time, we can really focus on what's important, um, which is our, li- our life that is given to us um, and our faith and really find your purpose at this time and really focusing on the good things rather than, you know, what's happening, this, this situation, this pandemic and all that. And I know a lot of people are losing th- their jobs anyway. Like I don't have a job at the moment, you know, it's just, it's really tough, but um, just focus on the good things rather than focusing on, on the bad things. Because when, when you magnify the good things, these you know, problems will just go away anyway. So it's easy to say, but actually, if you do it, magnify his glory and his goodness, you'll just feel the peace and his joy. As you say, 2020 has been really difficult, particularly for artists. You know, theatres have been closed, concert halls have been closed. Yeah. Um, and lockdown must have been really difficult for you. Do, you. do you feel like there's anything that God taught you? I mean, you've touched on some of it, but are there any lessons that God has taught you and your husband in yeah. this difficult season? You know, when they closed the show, I was actually doing Les Miserables in March. Yeah, March 2020. <laughs> I started, I, I opened it. Um, and then I was doing the show for two weeks. And then the show stopped because we have to do the lockdown. At that point, we don't know like a week, a month. And then, you know, it became four months and now six months <laughs> after. But at that point, I wasn't really feeling scared at all. I felt that peace. I was like, it's okay. If this is, you know, what it is, then we just have to enjoy this moment, which we did. It was so surprising for me and my husband because, to be honest, when we got married, we didn't have time. We didn't have quality time together. I was working at night and he was working during the day. So we both have, you know, opposite schedules. So we didn't really have time to communicate. He would just pick me up at work and then walk home. Ten minute walk home, that's our quality time. That's it. <laughs> every day and a Sunday during my uh, day off yeah the first two years of our marriage was really difficult (laughs) Um, and then the lockdown started it was like whoa God gave us this time to connect to reconnect and just really grow together and we had so much fun and I wasn't actually thinking of oh I want to go back to the show because I was focusing on at that, like my marriage and how to become a good wife. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's let's hear a little bit about your story. How did you meet Martin, and how did the kind of dating process and all of that lead to um, what is now a really happy marriage? And you've really invested into it in lockdown. But how did it all begin? I was on the plane from Manila to New York. Um, I remembered I was doing my quiet time. I was writing on my journal and I just started praying for some reason. I never prayed for a husband ever in my life. Like if, you know, I was dating people before and I would just pray for them, but not a real husband. And then at that time I started writing down. I said, you know what, Lord, I'm going to pray for a husband. I I don't know. I'm I'm not sure if I'm ready, but just so you know, this is what I want for a husband. (laughs) So I started writing down like, what I want for a husband, such a long list, very specific. And then, yeah, I got to New York. That was January. And then I, a friend of mine from the Philippines connected me to someone in New York who would, you know, help me out just to be like a second mom out there. And so she told me, oh, I want to introduce you to this guy in in our church in New York. Um, he's really nice a Christian guy and I'm like there's no way I will meet anyone right uh, right now you know I'm only here for eight months and I'm here to work and then she said well you you're just gonna be friends anyway like it's nice to have Christian guy friends Um, but I just said no to that Um, so anyway 
Sunday came, I went to church by myself and I saw this guy, this tall man leaning against the chair, just chilling. And I looked and I was like, I just felt something. <laughs> I second look, I said to myself, that's the guy I'm going to marry. And I'm like, who delete that thought, delete. <laughs> I was, it was really funny. But then, yeah, that was the first Sunday I saw him. And then the week after that, I brought this friend with me. And then she said, oh, this guy that I wanted to introduce to you, he's here. And I said, please do not introduce me. And this guy came up and then she introduced us. She was like, Martin, Rachel, Rachel, Martin. And I was so surprised because that was the guy I saw the week prior that I, you know, I told myself that's the guy I'm going to marry. Um, so that was kind of the start of it all. Um, someone set us up um, from church as well. She invited a lot of people for this gathering. And she told my, my husband, my husband now, <laughs> she told Martin, she said, um, I want to introduce you to someone. And then Martin ask her is she is she a filipina so she he had this feeling that i'm the one that you know the the friend will introduce to him so after that night was such an amazing night he was just talking asking me questions the questions he was asking me were the questions i wanted a man to ask me like really deep questions about christianity about my faith about god and i'm like this is the one i'm talking about like all this time and of course, I was just like, okay, I'm here in New York. I don't know where I'm going to be. Like my, 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 my thoughts were just like, you know, I think for us women, we just like think about the future right away. <laughs> um, I think, and then, yeah, that was the start. I think that was around February. And then he started pursuing me. And then we got engaged September that same year. So wow. <laughs> such a whirlwind, isn't it? <laughs> And now you and Martin have some very exciting news, don't you? Which you fairly recently shared on Instagram. Yes, we do. <laughs> yeah, we are expecting and we are so happy to have this blessing. And it's, it's just such, you know, a perfect time for us to build a family, especially that I'm not working at the moment. I can focus on being a mom and yeah just really enjoy enjoy this season oh, well yeah. congratulations it's so so exciting but <laughs> I suppose it, in many ways it's probably quite difficult to be a pregnant woman in your industry isn't it I suppose in terms of <laughs> e even physically singing ha has your body is it harder to sing is it has it changed <laughs> the way you sing well every time I'm speaking like like this I'm talking to you but I'm already like running out of breath <laughs> I was supposed to do uh, a show. They did this play, uh, the concert version of Play Miss. I was supposed to do it for like a few weeks, but then I had to say no because, you know, even if it's just standing on stage, even if it's just a concert version and there's social distancing, I, you know, there's safety measures and all that. I feel like it's going to be tough for me to sing and belt out. I said, I don't want to give birth on stage. So <laughs> I should just stay home. <laughs> No, but I think it's re it might be tough. Um, I mean, last week I did this, um, we filmed uh, something for church. Um, but that was amazing because I'm still la on my last stretch of second trimester. So that's fine. But I think like singing, you know, during the concert and the show after that, um, during my third trimester might be hard for me. So I think, yeah just rest for now and just really take it easy and yeah every time I sing actually the baby kicks wow <laughs> it's gonna be a musical baby <laughs> yeah and how do you think it's gonna be going back to work with a baby I mean that's probably gonna bring all sorts of difficulties isn't it because obviously you work at night time and how's that gonna work do you think have you not thought that far ahead yeah I just got an email before we started this call I just had an email from my agent asking me if I can do a show next year around May and when am I ready to start again? That was his question. And that's actually made me, you know, it makes me think now that am I really ready to go back right after? Like I, my due date is in March and I feel like I probably need a year <laughs> or more. I just want to enjoy, you know, because going back to theater, you just have to, it's not just like a nightly routine, like you have rehearsals and even if rehearsals will last for 
a month or two. The fact that you're going every night and you're just, I feel like I'm going to miss the baby a lot. <laughs> and I just want to be focused and really see the growth and just be present at least for the first few years, you know? Uh, so I think I'm going to have a longer break. I never realized I'm going to say that because before I'm like, I can't imagine live, leave, leaving my, my job. But now I'm like, my priorities are different. Do you feel like it's changed the way you think about God as well being pregnant? Oh, definitely. It's just like my husband and I are just so like surprised. I don't know the term, but we we're like, it's amazing how there's like another human being growing inside of me. Like, how is that possible? How can you think that there is no God? <laughs> right? It's just like, I don't know, like I can't put it into words, but it's just amazing that that whatever we prayed for, it's it's finally here. And it's funny because the moment we prayed for a baby, just like that. <laughs> wow. <laughs> so I'm like Lord you're so funny like your humor is just so funny um so yeah be careful what you pray for (laughs) (laughs) let's talk a little bit about church you you said that you were you recorded a song with church are you involved in worship then at your church um I am attending Westminster Chapel at the moment and um during the lockdown of course we cannot meet in person so What's amazing is that our musical head will always ask us to record at home, which is great because, you know, I'm not doing anything at home anyway. So I'd record worship on a Sunday. Um, And that's great because I was able to share it with my family in the Philippines as well. I sent the link to my friends so they can watch the service, you know, even to those people who doesn't really, who are not churchgoers. But then I have an excuse like, guys, you know, I'm singing here. I use that (laughs) to invite people to church, which, you know, it's, it's great. But yeah, I'm part of it. And I'm grateful. I'm grateful to be part of that. And how different is it singing in a worship environment where you're singing to God and leading the congregation in worship compared to being on a stage and performing? Do you, do you find it difficult to kind of switch between the two? You know, I love singing worship songs. If I can, my dream is to have a worship album. My dream is to do a worship concert in an arena. You know, like um, before my dream was to... To record albums like pop music and you know do concerts here and there but now it's just like I just want to worship it just feels so different the the joy that you get from it it's it's different and what I learned as well um before what I realized um when I used to sing in front of people when I sing like pop music or musical theater I always have that thinking of like I need to please people I need to be perfect. I need, you know, like I cannot be flat. I cannot forget my lines and all that. But those things happen anyway. (laughs) It still happened. But, um, you know, I'm such a perfectionist that I hated it so much every time I mess up. And then there was one performance that I want to share. The story is so amazing. Um, there was one performance. I was doing a show before I entered on stage. I was just doubting myself. And I said, God, is this for me? Like, I feel like I always mess up. Um, please, like, I, I feel like I don't fit in. Please talk to me if this is for me. Because I feel like I'm just such a mess. And, you know, all that. I was crying. And then I went on stage. I did the, the scene. And then during that scene, um, it was in Les Miserables. And then the lead guy hugged me. I, I was about to die in, the, in that scene. And the, the guy hugged me. And then he whispered, you're amazing. And at that time, we were working for probably a year and a half. And he never, he never whispered anything to my ear. And at that night, that specific night where I prayed, um, you know, God talked to me. Is this you know, is this for me? And then that guy spoke to me and whispered, you are amazing. And I just, I was sobbing on that hospital bed and that scene. I, I, I you know, I, I'm supposed to be like lying still and not moving, but I was sobbing. <laughs> and I just like, that was God. That was God's voice. That's God's still voice telling me, do not doubt yourself. You know, and then after that performance, that changed my whole entire performance, um, my whole entire career. And I was like, I'm not performing for people. I'm not 
performing to please people. I'm performing to, to please God. I've got this one special audience watching me from above, cheering for me. And so I think that changed my whole thing. Like, even if, yes, it's great to perform worship music, but now when I perform pop music or musical theater songs, I treat it like I'm singing worship music anyway. So it's just like, I don't know, there's that different feeling. Like, it's like there's that butterflies in your stomach that giggle. <laughs> and you're like, I'm singing for God, you know? I'm, I just want to honor him. But, uh, of course, it's special if it's for, you know, worship and just the words are really meaningful and all that. And do you have a favorite worship song or hymn, something that you would always go back to? It's tough. I love loads. I like, I love Tasha Cobbs. I love, at the moment, I'm obsessed with Maverick City's music, the, the songs. I would always play, like, sorry, I, I always say sorry to the neighbors because I feel like I'm <laughs> Seriously, if you're my neighbor, you probably be you probably get tired of hearing my voice now. But um, I would always play um Tasha Cobbs like not by might, not by power, by your spirit, God, send your spirit, God. I just I just love that song, and I use that actually when I was in Hamilton. I always sing that before the show, and just use it to vocalize but then worship at the same time before the show so um that's really special and i love oceans by hillsong um I actually sang that um on our wedding day a lot a lot on the list but i think those are the top two uh, rachel if you could go back to your teenage self sort of learning everything you've learned along the way is there anything that you would go back to say 15 year old rachel what would you say to her Ooh not to worry about things. I love to worry. Like, I was such a worrier. And I felt like I wasted so much time thinking about things. And then in the end, it will work out anyway. So I think just stop worrying. And that she is strong. That she can go through anything. For so many years, that girl, that little racial, like, she went through a lot by herself, you know, with God beside her. I can I can always see that picture of me sitting uh, at the end of my bed and God is beside me, like just tapping me. Like, it's okay, my child. You can cry, you can cry. And I always felt that I was, you know, that, that around that age, I'm always, I felt alone. Like I didn't know God at that time. But yeah, if I can just tell her that, you know, God is going to be with you. So there's no point in worrying anyway. So yeah. <laughs> If you could give a young person who wants to get into singing in some capacity, if you could give them any advice, what would it be? Um, To just really enjoy this time. I know it's tough, but there are so many classes that you can do online. You got to do everything that you can so that you can grow, like do acting classes, voice, dance classes. And it's tough at the moment that you, you, you can't see, you know, people physically, but online is... It, it's a thing now, so just do it. Hone your gift. Try everything. I know it's not going to be easy. People are like, okay, I want to do this, but I want to do that. I feel like just try everything that you want and just see what do you really love and you know what you're passionate about. Do that and never focus on other people, um, especially now the social media. It's just out there. You know, <laughs> I feel like so many young kids are just like on social media and comparing themselves to other people and just trying to be someone else that they're not. So I think just want to encourage the young people out there to be authentic. Um, Don't compare yourself to other people and just what do you really want to do? Who you really are, just dig deeper. And eventually people will see that, that glow in you, that uh, authenticity and people will appreciate that authenticity and sincerity that's coming from from inside of you so yeah just focus on yourself and let your light shine out there (laughs) and if people are struggling with nerves maybe they're already doing singing in some capacity but they're really struggling with nerves I know you also struggle with nerves what what advice would you give yeah that's me um (laughs) really again when you're out there when you're about to perform um you have to think and why you're feeling that way 
you have to go back to basic. Like, why am I feeling that way? Is it because I want to please people? Is it because I want to be perfect? Um, but use that time to really reflect and realize that I have this talent. I have this gift. What is my purpose? And for me, I found that the purpose is to actually share my gift. When I was, you know, doing shows before, I see people like kids, like in the front row, first few rows, who are like, who looks like me, like Asians, you know, like, and I know when I meet them after the show, they, you know, they will hug me and they'd be like, I look like you, like one day I can be like you. So just wherever you are, like, just remember that someone out there is watching you, you know, and there was one time I was doing a show. I think that was like the opening of Hamilton. <laughs> I was so nervous. And then I, someone said to us, like, just think about um, yourself when you were a kid, that you wanted this show bad. So I would always go back to that. I would always go back to, why am I here? Like, this is my dream. So really focus on that as well, um, that you, you know, you wanted this and people are rooting for you. When you audition, they will tell you, don't be nervous because we are actually rooting for you. So to everyone who's nervous out there, when you're performing, when you're auditioning, just remember that people are rooting for you. Just be yourself and just enjoy every single moment. Thank you for listening to The Profile on Premier Christian Radio with me, Ruth Jackson, speaking to Rachel and Go. This programme is brought to you by Premier Christianity, so don't forget you can get yourself a free copy of the magazine by heading to premierchristianity.com slash free copy. Do join us at the same time next week for another fascinating interview.